So an enemy attacks you. Get in your wrestling stance. Begin to wrestle. Don't, don't wrestle hard. Don't go far. He, he, he begins to wrestle you and talk about, look at what's going on in your life. Look at where you are. You thought you'd be further ahead than you are now. And, and, and look at that. And, and, and look what's going on. Look at where you are financially. And then you're not really feeling that good. And, and, and you know, uh, look at what's going on with your children. And, 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 and look at that sort of thing. I mean, he, how, how do you feel about that? That's, that's, that's sad, isn't it, what's going on? It, you, know, uh, it, 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 you know, just forget it. It begins to take your energy. You are under attack. So how do you fight back? As is often the case, and they're going to set some stuff up here. Uh, while they're doing that, um, I realize that, and that there's most people. They're bringing out a, a mat here. Most people um, are in a situation where folks don't know what's really going on with them. Amen. They don't, because a lot of what's going on with them just takes place inside of their head. People really don't know what you're thinking. As a matter of fact, um, Paul says, no one knows the things of a man save the spirit that's in him. So oftentimes, uh, there's, we appear to be in one space in our mind and emotions, and we're actually in a different space, which is why, you know, people are shocked when they find out what you're really thinking. Amen? And you know, it's nobody's business what you're really thinking. But it is your business. And you need to tend to your business. Okay, I'm ready. I want to look at some things here. Little Larry, you come up too. Yeah, I think he was trying to get out of it. He's not going to be able to get out of it. Okay, you'll be my third guy. All right. Now, it's interesting that after Paul, after he demonstrates and, and talks about all that God has done for us in the book of Ephesians, how in the first chapter he says he's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. He's given us all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. He didn't say that. He said he's given us all things pertaining to life and godliness, and P Peter said that, uh, that he chose us, you know, uh, before the foundation of the world, be holy and uh, without blame before him in love. And that God in the second chapter, with, you know, had mercy on us. We once were, you know, out there under the prince of the power of the air, the God of this world. But God had great mercy on us and loved us and all that. And he goes through all the things in the third and fourth chapter. And he comes to the sixth chapter. He says, finally, I said all that, but let me end this with this. Let me conclude with this. Because if you don't get this, none of that other stuff is going to be what it should be in your life. He says, finally, what does he say after that? Be strong. Now, why would somebody tell you to be strong? My two wrestlers, come out here. Chris and Omar. Chris has got big. <laughs> Can he beat you? No, ain't no way. Yeah, that ain't happening. Is, is it, can you take him? I don't know. He can't. If he could, he'd say so. Amen. Amen. He going, he, you're going to get him one day, though, aren't you? That's right. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, it says that be strong in the Lord. Now, why would it tell you to be strong? Now, if you guys were getting ready to wrestle, what would you do? What, now, why you do that? Why you get low? Oh, because that's your position of strength. So it's saying, be strong. Give me a mic. Let me, here, let me grab me a mic. Yeah. One of them, yeah. So when they get ready to engage in wrestling or in a, in, in, you know, in a contest, first thing they do is they get strong. Am I right? 
Because, I mean, you're standing up like that, right? Okay, now. You don't, I promise you, you don't want none of this. You may, you may know all the moves and stuff, but whatever you put up here, brother, I will break it. You just need to understand that. Let's get that straight. Let's get that straight. Okay, I'll, I'll break all that. Snap you like a twig. I wish a, woo. <laughs> I wish a brother would. Okay, stand over here. I just want to show him something. Okay, let me do it. Just stand, face me. Okay, just stand relaxed. All right? See how easy it is to push him? Why? Because he ain't strong. Now get down in your wrestling stance. He ain't going nowhere. See, he's a wrestler. He, he don't let nobody just come at him. That's good. That's good. He ain't going nowhere. Why? Because he's strong. Now, and I like that. Get down again. Not only is he not going anywhere, but he's not letting somebody just come up on him. Why? Because he's being strong and he's taking a stand. He's saying, look, this is my territory right here. You come up in here, you're going to get something. Okay? So he says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, that you may be able to do what? The whole goal is to stand. Why is it important? Sim, Sims Johnson here is a, is a wrestling coach. Why is it important when you're wrestling to stand? You need balance. You got to be able to defend yourself. Okay, so it's the position where you can defend yourself and where you have balance. Now, what happens when you don't have balance? You're going to get put on your back. Oh, okay. You're going to get put on your back. You don't want to get put on your back. And so you, the whole goal is to stand. Why? Because you, the only time you want to leave your feet is when you have the advantage. Now, if, 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 if okay, you guys get in a wrestling position, okay? Now, Omar, shoot a, a, a single leg on him. Okay, now he, now take him down. Just let him take you down, Chris. Okay, now, now, now keep going, keep going. What would you do if you had him down? Get back down. What would you do? Okay, now he's leaving his feet. Why? Now stop, stop. You stop right there. Okay, now you can get off of him because I don't want, I don't want you, I don't want you to be mad at me. Because now you left your feet. Okay, now he left his feet because he had the advantage. He was going to pin him. Now what happens when you leave the, your feet and you don't have the advantage? You got to scramble to get off your back. And what, what if you don't? You're going to get stuck. So you're at the mercy of your opponent when you leave your feet when he's attacking. So when he's attacking, what do you need to do? Get down your stance at me, at me. Now I'm attacking you. You got to stand. You got to keep me off you, okay? You got to stand when, you're, when he's attacking. Now when you're attacking, that's the only time you don't need to stand. That's because you're in the process of putting your enemy in a place of submission. Now he says, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might because we what? Wrestle. That's why we're here. We wrestle not against what? We don't wrestle against people is what it's saying. Flesh and blood is just talking about people. He said, but we wrestle against a spiritual opponent who's attacking us in the spirit. Now, that term wrestle in the Greek is pele. And it talks about the groman wrestle. There's different styles of wrestling. Groman wrestle wrestling, do you groman wrestle? It, it, mostly, it mostly deals with throws. The enemy tries to throw you. And he wins when he has you on the ground and has his hand in your neck. That's when, that's when the winner is declared. It's kind of like submission. Now put your hand in his neck. Okay, now you just won. All right? That's, that's the style. So the enemy is trying to first throw you. Why is he trying to throw you? He's trying to get you off balance. He's trying to throw you off so he can do what? Get you on the ground and get you into submission. Okay? Okay, now, that's where they do it. They pick him up and grow more record. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Okay. Put your hand in his neck. That's it. Because when somebody got their hand in your neck, nothing you can do. They can kill you and cut off your windpipe. Okay? 
Now here's the deal. It goes on to say, put on the whole armor of God. Now these guys have on the, 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 this gear right here. Now why do they have on that headgear? There's a such thing called cauliflower ears where you done got your ears twisted and they swell up overnight. You won't know it till the next day and you wake up. Poof. So it's for protection. True. So if you're going to engage in this type of activity with an opponent, then you, want, you, got, you need to have that protection. You need them shoes on because you get to slip and slide. Oh. Now it does talk about the shoes. And actually, the shoes that it talks about in, in, uh, in Ephesians are kind of like that. And I'll talk about that a little bit later. So you got to have good footing. Right. Okay. Right. A little Larry, come here. Now you wrestle, right? Okay. Now. Now, you see, he doesn't have on any of that gear, all right? Little Larry, you know, is, is dressing for success. Amen. <laughs> How old are you, little Larry? 17. 17 and single, you know what I'm saying. Little Larry is <laughs> he handling business this morning, you know. Amen. I ain't mad at you, little Larry. I ain't, I ain't mad at you. I ain't mad at you. Okay? All right. Now, here, here's what happens to most of us. First of all, it talks about put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to do what? Okay. Most of us, we, we just, just trying to live a normal life. Just, you know, day to day, just trying to live a normal life. And we're involved in activities and situations with people, and we don't know when we're under attack. Okay? Now, you be the enemy. Okay? Now, Larry just stand and mind his own business, right? Now... He comes to work. Hold on, hold on, hold on. He comes to work. No, I, I, he comes to work, and he's dealing with uh, some coworkers, right? And the coworkers start talking about the boss and how the boss is tripping. And they tell you, they say, "Well, the boss was talking about you the other day. He's talking about you know, he don't know, you know, you're not doing a good job. You're not really pulling your weight. He don't really like you. I mean, you're doing okay, but he don't really like you." And, uh, you know, he's saying that he, he might try to see what he can do to move you out of here and get you out of here or whatever. And, uh, you know, he doesn't like this. He doesn't like that. Now, now, they're all in his head about the boss. Now, he's having a conversation with coworkers. But what he doesn't understand is that he's under attack. The enemy is trying to do what? Steal, kill, and what? Destroy. But he's going to use people and situations. Now his co-workers don't know that the enemy is using them. One of the main things that the enemy uses is deception. And if you don't understand what's going on on that level, you're just going about having a normal life and having a normal day and just interacting with people and you're under attack. What happens? You stand up minding your own business, right? Okay. Now you're... you're uh, you, you get in your stance. You don't. You just stand there minding your own business. Now attack him. That's what happens. You find yourself just, just somewhere just reeling. Now, now, you, now they got in your head and, and you go and your boss say something to you like, mm. and you got an attitude. And they don't know why. Here's what you don't understand. The person talking to you has been talking to the boss about you and saying stuff that you got a problem with your boss. And then they're in your ear. The real issue is, is that the person wants your job. So they're in your boss's ear. They're in your ear, okay? And now the enemies put a scheme together to get you in financial just mayhem, just, fin just tow up financially. And he knows the first thing he needs to do, first thing he needs to do is stop your income. And he knows how you are. And he knows what buttons to push. Now here you minding your own business, just coming to work, do a job because you got a family to feed. And the person's in your ear, in the boss's ear. Now you have interaction with the boss that the enemy is controlling by what he's told both of you. And you're under attack. You end up getting fired. And now you're mad at the boss. He just don't, he, he don't like me. <laughs> what difference does it make whether the boss likes you or not? Are you there for a popularity contest? Or are you there to make money? 
See, you got to stand. Stay focused. Stand. Okay? Thank you, little Larry. All right? Now, uh, so you got a situation where you're talking to, um, you're talk say you were talking to uh, another lady. You're married and you're talking to a lady, and she's talking to you about your husband. And she's saying, well, you know, he's insensitive. And you're like, yeah, he is kind of insensitive. You know, when's the last time he told you he loved you? As, when is the last time? Now, he, you just forgot. The devil blinded your mind. You just forgot. <laughs> Might have told you yesterday. You just forgot. Amen. All right. And, and, and say, you know, and he, uh, uh, you know, he got wandering eyes. You know, and then you go to the grocery store and you checking out and you see a magazine with Beyonce by, on it. And you say, you know what? He was in this grocery store yesterday. He's probably lusting after Beyonce. And then tell you, you know, uh, he wants her more than he wants you. You know what I'm saying? And so then, then this person is just talking to you, you know, saying, you know, you, you, you do all this stuff for him. Well, who does something for you? Who does something for you? Now, everything she says may be true. But here, understand this. What if her real issue is she wants your husband? Listen, listen. That puts what she says in a different category. And now, wait a minute. It ain't about what you're saying now. It's about you trying to get in my home and mess up what I got. I've been in this thing a minute now. And I'm not going to listen to what you say and evaluate what you say. Now I'm concerned about your motives. Now I'm coming against you. And if there's some issues in my marriage, I'll deal with that later. But right now I'm under attack. You're coming at me trying to get me thrown off so I go home and act a fool and they laid my husband, and then you're going to be like, you're going to be everything I'm not. You hear what I'm saying? So what makes it most important is motives. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And he'll use anything and anybody in the process. And you got you to gotta sometimes step away from what you're hearing and what you're seeing and discern the motive of the enemy. He's trying to steal something. He says, we wrestle not. Get in your wrestling stance against flesh and blood but against princes, against powers, spiritual weakness in high places. We wrestle not. Okay, stop. This boy don't know how to stop. You got to let the enemy know when he come at you, he's going to get something. But the problem is, a lot of times, Okay, now Omar, you're the enemy, all right? Now Chris, you kind of like minding your own business. You're not even thinking it's that serious, okay? Now, but he, he trying to get, he's trying to steal, kill, and destroy. So be kind of lackadaisical. Don't come at him too hard, but well, wrestle. Go ahead, be kind of lackadaisical, you know, just kind of put up a little something, you know what I'm saying? Fight a little bit, but, but go at him. Go at him hard, Omar. Go See what happens? It's over before you know it. Why? Because you're not even in a position to wrestle. Why? Because he got you caught up in what somebody's saying, what somebody's doing. He's trying to steal your finances. He's trying to steal your marriage. He's trying to steal your kids. He's trying to steal your mind. He's trying to steal your esteem. He's trying to steal your hope. He's coming after what you expect. Listen. Get in the wrestling stance, both. Listen, it, now by the faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. God gave us those things to stand on. They abide. We're supposed to stand on them. 
First thing is that uh, you got to take a serious stance because of the type of battle you're in. You can't just be in there like this. You got to take a serious stance. Okay? And then once you, once you stand, then uh, you got to understand, look, look, God's given me hope. Now, when something comes against my expectation that comes from the Lord, I have to understand, wrestle. I'm under attack. Go ahead. Wrestle. I'm under attack. Stop. Okay. But it doesn't feel like that. I mean, you were hoping to get this position at work. And uh, somebody else got it. It's like, man. Now, that's normal stuff. That happens. But here's the attack. Okay, well, see, you are... Uh, you're never going to get past where you are. It's not going to happen for you. See, it's always going to be somebody else. It, always somebody else. I was dealing with a person. They must have interviewed. And they're flying all over the nation interviewing. And every time they come back, well, they hired from the inside. They were disappointed. I told them, I said, look, the grace of God is on your life. And if you didn't get it, it's because God's got something better for you stand see so you stand the enemy comes after come after him chris come after him chris come after him okay stand he stood see you you gotta you gotta know what he's after he's after your hope he's after your expectation that god is gonna bless you that god is on your side and you stand on the hope we stand on the hope that goes in beyond the veil my God is what we stand on. He comes to get your joy. Joy sometimes can be fragile. Comes to get, you know, your joy doesn't come from this world. So this world shouldn't be able to take your joy. But he's coming to steal, kill, and destroy your joy. A Christian without joy is a Christian who's under some serious attack and who's submitted to a dark, depressive spirit of the enemy. See, he has no joy, and he wants everybody to be in a foul mood like he is because he's damned forever. We have eternal life. We have the Holy Ghost. We have joy unspeakable and full of glory. So what's going on? There are some things that are disheartening, some things that may bring dismay, some things that are sad, but that's on one level. That's on the flesh and blood level. My joy is based on the fact that Jesus died for me, glory to God, and he chose me to be his own. Hallelujah. So an enemy attacks you, getting your wrestling stance. And you begin to wrestle. Don't, don't wrestle hard, don't go far. He, he, he begins to wrestle you and talk about, look at what's going on in your life. Look at where you are. You thought you'd be further ahead than you are now. And, and, and look at that. And, and, and look what's going on. Look at where you are financially. And then you're not really feeling that good. And, and, and you know, uh, look at what's going on with your children. And, 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 and look at that sort of thing. I mean, he, how, how do you feel about that? That's, that's, that's sad, isn't it, what's going on? It, you, know, uh, it, 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 you know, just forget it. it. It begins to take your energy. You are under attack. So how do you fight back? I mean, he's talking about what's going on. We fight not against flesh and blood. We look not on those things that are seen. What do we look at? Things that are not seen. Okay? And so uh, sometimes it depends on how far you got to go back. Okay? Uh, just light, light wrestling. All right? Light wrestling. Uh, so he, he, he comes at you and talks about, uh, you know, look at you. You know, you, 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 you said your New Year's resolution, you're going to lose weight, you gain 15 pounds. And just look at how things are going and, you know, and, and you just, uh, uh, you spend most time by yourself. It's just a tough, you know, and it just, I mean, just forget about it. Just, you know, you don't feel like uh, uh, really doing much and, 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 you know, just all kinds of things to attack your sense of well-being. So what do you do? You take it to another level. When Jesus was tempted in the wilderness, the enemy said, turn these stones to bread. Did Jesus start talking about bread and stones and being hungry? 
No. He started talking about what God said. He started quoting the word because he realized he was under attack. I need you to realize when you're under attack, you got to win the war within. The enemy comes, and you think, he wants you to think it's your fault. He's a master of deception. These are just thoughts. When you realize those thoughts are beginning to affect the way you feel, the way you think, the way you think toward other people, and your energy level toward God and the things of God, that's when you need to respond. And he says, you know, uh, uh, you, don't, you don't feel like going to church. You know, same thing every week. You know, and church folk, they ain't right. There's a bunch of hypocrites in the church. Well, there's a bunch of hypocrites all over the world. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, uh, when you become Jesus, then you can judge everybody else. But it ain't even about that. It's not even about church people. See, what he knows is that if you keep coming to church, you're going to receive life from God. And when he attacks, you're going to have a response. Because I'm going to preach on the very thing that the enemy's trying to come against. And you, you're just going to have a response. And you're going to be able to stop him dead in his tracks. And so he's first got to separate you from your strength. From a source where you continue to be strengthened. It's all part of his scheme. You may just think, I'm tired. I don't want to go to church. How many people have said, man, I'm tired, I don't want to go to church, and came to church and got the very thing you needed. Listen, that I'm tired, I don't want to go to church, that was part of the enemy's scheme. You have to realize when you're under attack. And it sounds like it always sounds, it's your voice. Well, that's God and the enemy use your voice. It's your voice. You're under attack. So what do you do? Coy one more time, getting it. light wrestling. These guys don't know how to do nothing but go hard, do they? <laughs> light wrestling. So, so the enemy comes after your joy. And you say, well, the joy of the Lord is my strength. That's how you fight. That's how you wrestle. See, we wrestle with the word of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength, glory to God. And I, I don't care what you say. Jesus died for me. Hallelujah. I will bless the Lord. Oh, my God. Come on. I will bless the Lord. At all times, pick up the pace. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be on my lips. Glory to God. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And let us bless his name together. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's give our wrestlers a hand, will you? Thank you, boy. These my guys here. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, sir. <laughs> I want you to understand, we may just be whatever. The enemy is wrestling. So we need to wrestle. And we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Amen. We wrestle against a spiritual opponent who's trying to steal, kill, and destroy. And many of us, the enemy's come in and stolen some precious things from us, and we didn't even know. Even me, I, I was, I was, uh, um, you know, I've been tripping lately in this sense, like not wanting to go to bed, not wanting to eat. You know, I just don't feel like it. It just hit me this morning. So you know what? I mean, you, you know, you, you all right, I guess, but you keep doing that over a long period of time. That's going to affect you. I said, the en he's telling me the enemy's trying to steal your help. And it's just a simple suggestion, you know, just simple suggestion. It's not centered. I know it's going to mess with some folks. Which way? This way? Am I good? I know some people are not going to be able to. Anyway. But I could hear what he's saying if you could straighten that pool for it out. Just. See, that's the enemy. See, trying to steal your word. <laughs> Glory to God. I did all this so we could understand what, you see how intense that wrestling is? That's intense. 
You think that the enemy's going to come against you like, no, he's coming at you hard. Every wrestler has a vulnerable spot. He knows where you're vulnerable, and he's coming at you hard. Okay, we're good. We're good. We can just, we'll just fix the rest later, okay? So the question is, are you going to be able to discern when you're under attack? I promise you right now, your family's under attack. I promise you. I promise you your family's under attack. I promise you your joy is under attack. Oh, ain't no question. Your hope is under attack. And your faith is under attack. Your confidence in God, that, that, that just, that knowledge, that just, that thing that says, I know God's coming through for me. Let's turn the other air condition on. I know God's coming through for me. I know he is. That's under attack. You are under attack. Okay? So that's why he says, stand. Don't just, you know, be here. Take a stance of power and leverage. That you may be able to do what? Stand against the wiles of the devil. Our goal is to stand. Somebody say stand. My concern is many of us not even knowing that we're under attack because it's so well cloaked. He knows how to touch on things that we care about or things that affect us and make us forget about what else could be going on. Just like what I was saying, if you're, if you're a, a married woman and you're talking to another woman and she's kind of dropping little things about your husband that are true, it's like it'll start making you think. But if you know that this woman's after your husband, you're not even hearing what she's saying. You're coming against her. And that's what we need to be doing. Listen, the little thoughts you have, the little things that happen, you need to take a break and break away from it. Don't just get wrapped up in it. Break, break away from it and discern, and you need to understand what I'm talking about, and discern the motives of your attacker. Is the enemy trying to steal something? Is he trying to steal my family? Is he trying to steal my relationship with my child? A, you know, that that parent-child relationship can be, you know. And, and a lot of times, um, parents, we have to understand when we're driven by fear. Because of some of the things we went through, we so don't want our children to suffer what we've suffered. Okay? That a lot of times, if we see something in that area, we'll go overboard. All right? I think my mic's just a little too hot. You can hear me well, right? I feel myself peaking a little bit. That's, praise God, that's better. All right. Now, you have an exchange with your child. Now, they lied to you. Now, to, there's, see, there's few things that get me harder than, and faster than my child lying to me because I'm a perceiver. So if I think you're lying to me, see, now I'm, I'm, I'm in a place, you know, because you're lying to me, all right? And, and so here the enemy's talking to you now. All you've done for them. Huh? You sacrifice so they can have not only what they need, but what they wanted. And then they're going to stand in your face and lie to you? Oh, no. Okay, now, everything you said is true. They did lie to you. But are you under attack? Is the enemy trying to steal the relationship that you have that God put in place so that when they really need you. So now, yeah, they lie, but you're tripping. And they're thinking, oh, they tripping. <laughs> you know. I mean, yeah, they not, and they're thinking, it's not like they never lied before. They told me about all how they used to lie all the time. <laughs> so it's not like I'm the only person ever to tell a lie. And they're about ready to crucify me 
And it's a good thing I didn't tell them the whole lie. They might have knocked me out. So here, this person in their mind, and then you go overboard, so now they're protecting their heart against you. And they're hardening their heart to protect themselves against you. The enemy knows in a month they're really going to need you. So he's trying to put up a barrier so that a month from now, when a situation comes up and they really need to come to you, they don't feel comfortable doing it. And you're really not in a place to hear them because they lied to you. You hear what I'm saying? What's most important? We love our children. I don't think children understand how much we love them. It's crazy how much we love our children. I would be willing to just sacrifice everything I, ha everything I can ever do to be successful for the rest of my life for my children to be successful. I don't need to do another thing. I'd sacrifice it all for them. Do you hear what I'm saying? And they love us. It's just something about, I don't think, I don't think parents know how much their children love them. Now it's time for children to shake their heads like the, <laughs> the parents shook their heads. Like, come shake it, come shake your head, baby. That's right, shake. get it in. Even if you're not, you know, Lord will forgive you. Just shake it right about now. I don't think parents really understand how much kids love them. Well then, how does it get messed up then? Because you get under attack. Enemy gets in your ear. Enemy gets in their ear. Begins to try to control the way you see things. Tell you, well, they this, they don't care about this, they this, they that, they that, they just that. Harden your heart towards one another. You know, kids can't wait to get old enough to get out of the house. I'm trying to get back in the house. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I would love to be in a situation where I didn't have any bills. Not much. All I got to do is learn and act like I got some sense. Oh my goodness. Happy days are here again. Are you kidding me? I couldn't wait to get out of the house and do what I wanted to do. What I didn't realize that I was under attack. You need to hear me, young people. I was under attack. The enemy was, enemy was setting me up. Isn't that my house wasn't that bad. And the stuff that I couldn't do, I shouldn't have been doing anyway. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing wrong with having some rules to follow. You got rules to follow. You need to put your own rules on yourself. So I couldn't wait to get out of, get out of the house and get on my own. And... <laughs> I went to college and just totally tried to destroy my life because I was being set up. Nobody can tell you what to do. You can come and go as you please. Nobody tell you when to go to bed. So I did not go to bed. I mean, I fell asleep, but I didn't go to bed. And I'm still dealing with that today. I don't go to bed. I fall asleep first. Then I go to bed. Okay, and a lot of times I get back up because I can't sleep. But all that started. So sometimes you're being set up. You're under attack. Why? Because the enemy will steal your potential. Here I am, graduated from high school with a 3.8 GPA, college prep courses. That's what my transcript says. They didn't get my last semester. Praise the Lord. Okay. <laughs> You know, just smart, all that kind of stuff, just ready to go at it, right? I get to college, all I can do is get high. I start going to class at first, but it just got worse and worse and worse. Why? Because when I was at home, I couldn't wait to be on my own, to do my own thing, where nobody can tell me what to do. Nobody can tell me when to go to bed. Nobody can tell me who to hang out with and who not to hang out with. So I'm hanging out with Tom, who you know, drives a motorcycle who knows where the best dope is. I don't know where Tom went to get his dope, but Tom had the best dope. And Tom was a, like a hippie. Now I'm hooking up with people like that. Somebody who my parents would not approve of. But I don't care, I'm doing my own thing. 
I was under attack and didn't know it. You know what I should have done when he's talking to me? I should have took a stance. What do you stand on the word? Honor your mother and father. Huh? That it may be well with you. Honor them. Submit to them. Be under their authority. Take a stand. How many of us are under attack right now? I mean, you got your mind just twisted about something. Somebody, some situation. And you know what? Everything you're thinking and saying is true. But when you look at the motives of the one who's talking to you, you realize it's the enemy trying to steal, kill, and destroy. Quickly go to Ephesians, the sixth chapter. I've been in there all day. Ephesians 6 and 10. The enemy wants to do what? He wants to do what? He wants to steal, kill, and destroy in every area of your life. And the main thing he's going to use is deception. He's always going to get you to focus on something else while he's working a different angle. Deception. He's going to get you to focus on what somebody's saying and what somebody's doing, and he's going to give you a perception of what they're saying and doing, and his whole purpose is to throw you off because you're believing God for something, and now he's got you caught up in something he's throwing you off, and now you're off balance. You don't have leverage, and he's able to come in and do damage in that area. And it doesn't even seem like what he's dealing with and what he's thinking about is that difficult. What he's talking about is, that, is, is of that kind of consequence. He tries to make you think, oh, it's nothing. Just relax. Just relax. Listen. Don't go to work today. Just relax. You can tell them, you know, you can tell them something. Plus, you got vacation days. So don't even go. Just relax. And then he's talking to you. Then, then your boss has a meeting, and he comes under a lot of fire, and he's going to need some people who are really committed. And he's really looking to nail some things down today. And he says, where's so-and-so? Oh, they didn't come in. The enemy tells them, you cannot run your department with unreliable people like that. And you're like, I'm always here. That doesn't matter. The enemy's running a scheme. That's why we got to be, so you got to know, am I just being told to relax because I need to relax, or am I under attack? Is this part of the scheme of the enemy? How he tells you to relax. What you do for pleasure. Some of us have weaknesses. Some of us have generational weaknesses. The enemy knows that. So he's always trying to set us up to fall according to our generational weaknesses. And you could have normal stuff. You could have normal marital, marital stuff that everybody has. Everybody's dealing with it. But because of how, what you got going on, maybe you're a guy and your father was a player. And that's all you've seen. And when you have an argument, the enemy tells you she doesn't care about you. She doesn't respect you. You don't have to put up with that. You get frustrated. So-and-so, you know, you can get with them. There's not going to be any of these trouble. You, listen, it shouldn't be this hard to be married. You should be able to enjoy the person you're with. Now, that sounds pretty good. You know, that sounds like it's right. But the motive of the person who's talking to you, the devil, is to steal your marriage and continue a generational curse. So you got to look at the motive and say, okay, it ain't about my wife and what she's doing or not doing. What it's about is you trying to steal something from me. 
and I got to neutralize you, and then if I have some issues in my marriage, maybe we can go to counsel or something, we can deal with those. This is not about my marriage. It's about the fact that I'm under attack. You stole, I look at my family, you stole all kinds of things, marriages and relationships in my family. Glory to God. But I'm believing God that mine is going to be different. Glory to God. So you got to take a stand. Are you with me? It says, let me run through this right quick. Finally, my brother, be strong, Lord, Ephesians 6 and 10, and the power of his might. What's indicating there is that the strength you're going to need to fight is not your own. It's not natural strength. Uh, it's the Lord's strength and his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles or methodias of the devil. Methods, his methods, how he comes at you. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take on you the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore. Interesting here that when it talks about put on the whole armor of God, look at verse 11. Verse 11 really controls, it's a phrase that controls pretty much the rest of what's said. Uh, it says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand, uh, may be able to stand. Now that to stand uh, in the Greek is stainai in the Greek. I guess is where we get the word stay. But it's, it, it's histemai, actually it's histemai in the Greek. And uh, it deals with, it's, a, it's an infinitive, to stand. Now, it's a type of infinitive that needs a helping verb. It's not, it's not enough by itself. It needs a verb or action to go with it to make it complete. And the action that goes with it is, do, is from the word dunamis, which means able. So it says, put on the whole armor of God, and the whole goal is to stand, but you have to be enabled to stand. So it's putting on the armor that gives you the ability to stand, okay? And so uh, how is it that putting on this armor gives you the ability to stand? Well, let's look at, at some things. Stand. Let's look at 14 verse. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about in truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherever you be able to stand, uh, we'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, uh, and the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Interesting how it ends with prayer. Now, uh, this truth deals with one or two things. It could either deal with, um, it could be objective, meaning, uh, the truth of the gospel or the elements of faith, or it could be subjective, mean practicing honesty and living in integrity in your life. Well, this particular one refers to both. Truth refers to both knowing and appropriating the truth of one's new identity in Christ and developing the practice of speaking and living the truth out. Unless you take this on and gird yourself with it, you're not going to be able to stand. Why? Because the enemy's coming with deception. He's coming with lies. He's going to tell you things about yourself that are not true. Low self-esteem for a Christian is based on us believing things that the enemy's saying about us that just are not true. They may have some reality, uh, but, but, but you got you to gotta discern the motive of the person telling you. If he's talking to you about yourself and all the things about yourself that are disgusting that you should not like, well, um, you got to discern this is somebody who's trying to steal, kill, and destroy. And if there's some issues about me that I need to attend to, then I'll do that later. But right now, I've got to take a stand and fight against the one who's trying to get me to feel bad about myself so I can lay down what God has raised up about me. Are you with me? It talks about the, breath, the breastplate of righteousness. It's interesting that the breastplate was something that goes over your chest to protect the vital part of your heart. Now you notice the gear that the wrestlers had on were for wrestling. 
they're saying for the type of wrestling that we're going to be doing against the enemy, this is necessary protective equipment. You've got to have on, you got to have on a belt of truth, and you got to have on a breastplate that connects to the belt of truth, and it's to gain full knowledge and appreciation of our new identity in Christ, especially as it pertains to him being our righteousness. The devil likes to call into question our status before God. Oh, you're not saved. You're not right before God. Look at what you're doing. Look, that's why the scripture says, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. The enemy comes against you. you may, listen, you may be guilty. You may have done what he said you did. But he cannot question your status before God. Because your status for God, before God, is not based on what you've done. Your status for God is based on what Jesus did. And so that's where I draw the line, take a stand. Or, I, you know, say what you want to about me. Yeah, I can be trifling. I did some things. God's not finished with me yet. Whatever you want to say. But you cannot question my status before God. I will not let you disrespect Jesus and what he did for me. He died on the cross for me. I'm saved. I'm not even going to let me and what I do change my status before God. Are you with me? See, some people, some churches, they have your salvation based on what you do. And so one week you feel saved, the next week you're at the altar getting saved again. There's one guy, I think, in a, uh, a three-month period, he was, he was dealing with some, some apostolic people. He got saved and baptized, I think, 13 times. I'm talking about got wet 13 times because he felt guilty about what he did. He looked at a girl, so he wasn't saved anymore, so he had to get saved all over again. That's another sermon that I don't have time to deal with right now. Okay? So this breastplate. The enemy's dealing with you from a natural realm so you can call into question your status before God. It talks about having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. They used to wear these, these boots, really they were leather sandals that had studs in the toe and in the heel so you'd have grip, so you wouldn't slip. And it talks about ready to proclaim the gospel, ready to share the hope that lies within you. The shield of faith, trust in God's power, his assurance about our new identity in Christ. See, they would take the shield and the shield was about the size of a door. And what would happen is the enemy wouldn't just shoot one arrow. He would shoot a bunch of them at one time. And so the person would get down on their knees and get under the door and just let the arrows hit the door until the enemy emptied his quiver. See, sometimes when you're under attack, it comes in waves. Sometimes you just got to get under your faith. I look unto the hills which come from my help. My help cometh from the Lord. I come this far by faith, trusting the Lord, leaning, you might just sing a song, leaning on his holy name. He hasn't failed me yet. Oh, 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 oh. come on now. Hallelujah. You're under your shield. Why? Because you're under attack. Those arrows coming so fast, you can't stop them. So all you can do is let your faith block them. Hallelujah. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. You can bring up every failure that I've ever done if you want to. You can bring up every weakness in my life, glory to God. But I am under the fact that I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. I am not going under. I'm more than a conqueror. If God is for me, then who can be against me? Nothing can separate me from the love of God that's poured out upon my heart by the Holy Ghost. You're under attack. The arrows are coming. Listen, you better get you some good faith scriptures. You better get you some stuff that you can stand under, that can cover you. Some stuff that can cover you when the wave comes. Because it comes in waves. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is on my side. Hallelujah. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Glory to God. I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, and that with a burning fire. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. I once was blind, but now I see. Glory to God. I can trust the Lord. Great 
is his faithfulness. My God, if it had not been for the mercies of God, I would have been consumed. They were new just this morning. Great is his faithfulness. I will wait on the Lord and be of good courage, and he shall strengthen my heart. I shall mount it with wings like, oh, my God. got to get under your shield. Sometimes you just got to cover yourself and wait for the wave to end. Cover yourself. And they tell you what? Now, when no arrows stop flying, okay, eh, then you take the sword of the spirit. You cut that joker's head off. I wish you would. God had that shield. God to know when enemies are trying to get you to lay your shield down. Can't lay it down. If you lay your shield down, even though you have on armor, even though you have the helmet of salvation, you lay that shield down, you're in trouble. Listen, the helmet of salvation is dealing with really how salvation plays out in your everyday life. Believers have been delivered from the dominion and power of sin to participate with Christ in exercising authority over the realm that sin reigns in. Believers have power over evil spirits as a result of their union with Christ. The helmet of salvation says, I'm one with Christ. Glory to God. I died with him. I rose with him. I'm a new creature. If any man be in Christ, he's what? I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. I am connected. I'm one spirit with him. And the enemy has no right to anything that belongs to me or mine. Glory to God. I have dominion over him because I am saved. Hallelujah. I've been made to sit in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Glory to God. And I have dominion over the enemy. I tread on scorpions. Hallelujah. And serpents. I'm not afraid of the enemy. Unfortunately, many of us experience a lot of attack. And we don't even know we're under attack. We're thinking about the situation. What somebody said. The frustration, the disappointment. You know, one of the greatest times you come under attack is when you mess up. Because this whole thing is to get in and convince you that you're not who God says you are. And he looks at what you did or what you didn't do. Look at that. If you were a man of God, if you were a woman of God, would you do that? Would you have done that? No. You're not a man of God. You're not a woman of God. You're a failure. Now you're just under the weight of that thing. Whereas you being a man or woman of God is not about what you've done. It's about what he's done for you. You can't stand on your behavior. Though your behavior needs to line up with God, but you can't stand on your behavior. You have to stand on the word. And all he can bring is your behavior. So the question is, what do you believe in the most? Your behavior or the word of God? What's going to control your mood? What's going to control your perspective? What's going to control how you feel about yourself? Interesting. At the end of this thing, he talks about praying. All kinds of prayer. Always. And he talks about making supplication for all the saints. And I looked at that. Part, and, and there's two things here. One, one is if you, if it's just about you and you're just fighting your own war yourself, you've already lost. We're in this thing together. And here's how the enemy gets us. He makes us feel like we're the only ones dealing with what we're dealing with the way we're dealing with it. But it's amazing. You get some men together and they start talking. You too. That happens that, that to you too. 
or you get some women together and they start talking for real and you realize or you get some kids together they start talking especially about Christian parents okay you realize everything that happens is what happens to everybody your situation is unique but it's not exclusive you're not the only one dealing with stuff you're not the only one going through you're not the only one who's failed you're not the only one who's lost stuff. Enemy wants to just separate you and just point you out and what you and you and what you had and what you lost and how they messed them and she left and he left and you didn't. That's all he wants to do. Make it about you. It can never be just about you. When you stop reaching out and trying to bless somebody else, you're under some serious attack. When he makes your life so small, that all you're really concerned about is you and your family, you're under some serious attack. This is praying, all prayer, supplication. For all saints. Let me tell you when you will get your greatest breakthrough. When you pray the prayer that somebody needs to pray for you for somebody else. Because what you're doing is you're releasing the power and authority that God's given you and is running through your system. And as it runs through your system, glory to God, that life is coming through you. God always intends to bless us as we bless somebody else. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness and we'll do what? Add all the things unto you. person sitting next to you, I promise you, is going through. They got some stuff going on with them. They do. You don't know where that, you don't know if they, if they've been on the verge of giving up or what. You don't know. You don't know how the enemy has attacked their mind. What he's telling them about themselves and their lives and how he's attacking their hope. And here you are with the anointing and the power of God sitting right next to them. And you have the ability to break the power of the enemy off their life. And part of your attack and overcoming your attack is tied into you praying for them and believing God on their behalf. You want to see them blessed. Why? Because we're in this thing together. We're believers. We're children of the living God. Jesus did all this stuff for us to be blessed. And you want to see that blessing flowing in their lives. Am I right? I mean, you want it flowing in your life, but you, there's a, listen, that Jesus is on the inside of you looking to reach out and bless somebody else. Glory to God. You want to see them blessed. You want to see them healed. You want to see them delivered. You want to see them raised up. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Am I right? Thank you, Jesus. You want to see the victory of Jesus Christ manifested in the life of a believer just like you want. Listen, because it, it's encouraging. If you see it in their lives, hey, it's for me too. God's in the blessing business. Don't listen. Don't hate when somebody gets blessed. Get excited. All the blessings are flowing. They're flowing. Here's what I want you to do. Here's what I want you to do. And you have no idea how powerful this is going to be. I want you to do it sincerely. I want you to pray for the person next to you. Okay? I want you to pray for the person next to you. Find one person. Hallelujah. And I want you to pray for each other. Glory to God. Pray God's blessing upon them. Lord, bless them. Come against the attack of the enemy. Satan, I bind you. You cannot have them. You can't have their fam family. Can't have their health. Can't have their finances. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I take authority over you. Come on, take authority over it. Come on, begin to pray. I take, let's right now, let's take authority over the plan of the enemy. I come against the plan of the enemy over their lives in Jesus' name. You cannot have them. Come on, pray. Open your mouth and pray for them. You can't have them, Satan. I command you to stop and to cease and desist right now. I command you to stop. And God, I desire you to bless them. Bless them, Lord. 
Bless them, Lord. Bless them, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless them, Lord. Right here. You don't have nobody. I'm your person. Bless them, Lord, in Jesus' name. Bless her in Jesus' name. Release her potential, God. Open doors for her. Come on, pray that God would open doors for her. Open doors for him right now. Hallelujah. Give him the wisdom to discern the attack of the enemy. I pray the blessing of God on their lives. Come on, just pray with all your might for God to bless them. Jesus.